for me. Um, not only have I, um, not only have I made a name for myself as a dancer of color, um, I have been able to, you know, win a Princess Grace Award, be named top 25 to watch, um, work for the TV show Empire, um, be cast in Intel's commercial as their principal dancer, um, find myself as an artist and also still work in a company that I was able to grow and navigate um, outside of being in the busyness and congestion of New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, so moving to Chicago ended up being one of the best decisions and choices of my life. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the journey and um, how I how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So that's so many amazing things that you are you're doing simultaneously. How do you how do you manage your time so that you can still be part of a company and still be able to do some of these, uh, you know, work for Empire and and dance in different uh, commercials like the Intel one? Uh, well, my first season at Visceral, I didn't really do anything. I kind of just focused on where I was and like adjusting to this new life and this new city. Um, but I, I was fortunate enough to have a director that allowed me to explore these things. And if I needed a day off or like to take a leave of absence, I communicated that with him and was able to, to do so. Um, don't get me wrong. There were some opportunities that I had to turn down because if we had a show that this role is the priority, mm -hmm. you know, so those are things that um, as dancers, we kind of have to we battle with at times, you know, it's either be with a company and be loyal and and um, sometimes have to miss out on things or decide to be a freelance artist. Mm -hmm. Um and I look up to dancers like Ebony Williams, who uh, she's actually from Boston originally, and she danced with Cedar Lake for 10 years and also danced backup for Beyonce and did all these incredible things while being at Cedar Lake. And, you know, the best advice is communicate, ask. If the director says, no, I need you for this show, then that's that's it. Yeah. Um. But sometimes if you don't ask, you won't know. And um, that was something I've, I've learned. And as I've grown into the adult I am, it's like I'd rather ask and then make the decision than not. Mm -hmm. um, and from that courage and like ownership of my career and my brand and what it is I want to do, I have been able to do so many different things. Mm -hmm. Recently, you've transitioned into being a choreographer. Tell me more about why that was important to you and, and why you chose to make that the next evolution of your career. Uh, choreography kind of came to me. Um, <laughs> it's really funny. I, I never really saw it as something that like, oh, I really need to choreograph. Um, you know, in college, we had your typical composition class. And um, when was my my first big opportunity was over the summer. Um, I was teaching at Houston Academy of Dance, which is a summer intensive for young kids. And this was my first opportunity to choreograph. Um, and it was quite scary. But in the process, I realized how much I liked it and enjoyed seeing the dancers have that eureka moment where they get it. Um, and then, like, opportunities continue to unfold. Uh, at Visceral, we have a show called Within, which is um, a show where the dancers of the company can choreograph on each other. Um, so that was another playground for me to explore on a smaller scale. Um, and in 2017, I got my big break with choreography. I was asked by a performance curator by the name of Cynthia Bond to create a work that would be presented in her show called Performing Home. And this topic really touched me because I am 
such a family oriented girl. I love being from New York City. I love being born and raised in the Bronx and all these different things. My parents being Jamaican immigrants, all these things kind of make me who I am. Mm -hmm. So that process allowed me to tap into that and really be vulnerable and share those um, life experiences with the audience. And by saying yes to that opportunity, a choreographer on the um, on the same show was able to see my work and invited me to choreograph at Northwestern University. Oh, that's great. Yes. It's, it's, it's exciting to hear how just kind of things evolve naturally just because they need to be in some ways. Absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that in 2017 you started uh, the Paige Fraser Foundation. What made you want to start a foundation and and how has that process gone? <laughs> so the Paige Fraser Foundation was another thing I had never thought about. <laughs> um <laughs> I had just been named Dance Magazine's Top 25 to Watch. And I had a moment when I was home in the Bronx and I just was overcome by so many emotions. I, um, you know, I just was so thankful and grateful for everything that had been awarded to me thus far. And yes, I worked hard and yes, I had been through a lot of um, disappointing situations in life. Um, but this moment, it just was like, wow, I really want to do something. I really want to impact the world beyond talking about my situation in interviews or, you know what I mean? I really wanted to, to give back. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had an aunt who, well, two of my aunts who have been very supportive of me since I was young and they came up with the idea that I start my own organization, my own non-for-profit. And we started to talk about it. And before you know it, they were, they meant business and we had a lawyer and we, we were like, it was happening. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I don't really know what I'm doing here. You know, I know the artistic side and, I know I'm I'm pretty um, organized and good with communication and I can get things done. Um, but luckily, yes, as I said, I had the support of my parents and family members uh, and we were able to get this thing going. Um, so we uh, officially formed in 2017, but launched in 2018. Um, and we had our big launch at the New York um Academy of Medicine and NIAM yeah. and we wanted it to be there because of the connection to um, natural ways of healing and a lot of the doctors involved there um, stand for that um, so we had it there during scoliosis month and it was a huge success and we had a lot of support and yeah that was just the beginning of um, the Paige Fraser Foundation, and our mission is to give back to dancers with or without disabilities. And this is past December, we held uh, Dances Healing, which was the inaugural event to our new program that will offer free classes to inner city kids. And we had a great two day run at Mind Builders in the Bronx, and it was actually covered by Bronx Net, and the kids were so inspiring and also left very inspired, which is the point. Um, and I was able to get together a fabulous faculty of friends that dance with Dance Theater of Harlem, um, Camille Brown, TU Dance, you name it. Dancers mm -hmm. and friends of mine came together and helped me make it happen. And it was a really magical um, weekend. That's fantastic. Um, what is the, the long-term goal then for your, your foundation? Like if ultimately, in the next five, ten years, what, what do you hope to uh, achieve? Uh, the long-term goal is to continue to give back to dancers with or without disability. Um, of course, to raise money and grants that we can be allowed to do this. 
And also we want to create a performing arts space in the Bronx um, that will be, you know, a, a further enhancement on this mission and um, continuing to create that safe space in an inner city and um, allow people to feel comfortable and come explore, whether that's by taking a dance class or a meditation class for mental health or a yoga class or a floor bar class or come and see a performance. Um, so that's our like main goal later down the line. Okay. Yeah. It's so to, to have a dance or start a, a foundation is, I, I think is very exciting and unique, but obviously not a, um, a, a, an easy to make parallel for a lot of people. So how has your dance training and your training in general affected how you've run the business side of your foundation? Hmm. Um, I mean, as I said, I have a lot of help from my family and my aunts are really in charge of the business side. I'm more <laughs> of the artistic director of the foundation mm -hmm. and I coordinate programs. Okay. So I've been able to do that with, with the help of family um, and also still maintaining my career. I'm still dancing and still choreographing. Um, so it's, it's a lot about balancing and a lot about delegating and communicating and letting people know I need help. Um, you know, like for instance, I do the e-blast and I operate the social media. Um, but there are a lot of business things that I, I'm not a, a part of. Um, yeah. So thankfully, because there's no way I could do it all. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. You know, it's a, it's a family affair. It, it's also sounds like you are very attuned with your strengths and mm -hmm. uh, have been able to bring in other people to compensate for where you uh, you feel less comfortable, which is fantastic. Yes. And I'm still learning as I go. Right now we're planning a fundraiser for hopefully um, the summer uh, where we will have performances, a fashion show. um and who who knows what else, but we're planning that for the summer, and then also our next dance is healing uh, program at the end of the year. Um, so we're we're starting small and starting in a way that we can still operate and not get too large too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially because I am still pursuing a career in dance, and um, you know, I made that very clear to my board. Um, which is my family, that that is still a priority for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is nice to have started this already and to have so much support and such a following uh, because I know when I do retire, I have something I can really, really uh, spend my time and energy on or more time and energy on. Oh, yeah. With the different stages of your career and life, how do you approach fear and what do you do when you need to push past it? Oh, good question. Um, so in my bathroom, I have a quote and it says, life is not about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Um, and I think throughout my life, I have been um, prepared and kind of groomed to handle uh, difficult situations. You know, I... I often say I was born a fighter, mm -hmm. uh, even though I've never been in a physical fight in my whole life, which I'm very proud of. Um, I've had to fight in other ways. I've had to fight through the diagnosis with scoliosis. Um, I've had to fight past being rejected from schools or companies, um, going to auditions, you know, all those things that as artists we deal with. And it affects our mental health. It's very easy to say, well, no one likes me. I'm just going to, you know, find something else that works, which for some, that is the path. That is a journey. But I was born to dance. And mm -hmm. once I knew that about myself, I had um, the faith and the determination to continue going after what it is I want. Mm -hmm. um, and don't get me wrong. There have been many castings. I went to an audition last week and it was a hip hop call and I'm not really a hip hop dancer, um, you know, but I can do it. And I went, you know, and I made it almost to the end. And it was 
really, uh, it, I was proud of myself because again, I, I pushed past fear and just went and auditioned and had a good time. Mm-hmm. And 